Next up is the Danish company Brain Plus with CEO and co-founder Kim Baden Christensen. Welcome. Thank you. And good day, everyone. Unfortunately, today, most of us knows a person who is either living with dementia or who has died of dementia. And dementia is set to become the leading cause of healthcare costs in the world. Already today, one out of three people, seniors in the United States, are dying with dementia. It's already the leading cause of death for women in the United Kingdom. 50 million people are diagnosed with dementia today. That number is set to triple to 150 million within the next decades. One of the big challenges is that traditional pharmacological treatments have been not been able to solve this disease effectively. And this is where there is a great unmet clinical need for alternatives, non-pharmacological solutions. This is where digital therapeutics come into the picture. A digital therapeutic is a software solution that either treats, manages, or prevents a disease or disorder. It is undergoing the same strict regulatory requirements as a traditional medicine. So that means the same level of necessity for clinical validation and, and safety for safety and efficacy. Some of the benefits, though, of clinical, of digital therapeutics is that they are safer. They can use data to personalize the treatment for optimized health outcomes. They can be delivered on people's mobile devices directly into people's homes, optimizing for convenience and privacy. And overall, they can help lower healthcare costs. Brain Plus, we have a mission to make effective dementia treatments available to everyone as digital therapeutics. Our clinical target is to counteract cognitive decline. Cognitive decline is what happens when we age as well. We lose the ability to remember things, we lose the ability to concentrate, but this is a hallmark of dementia. We do this in order to help people preserve their independence and to add more healthy life years to themselves. The same therapeutics that we can use within dementia are also relevant in the earlier stages of, for example, Alzheimer's disease, a pre-dementia stage. Here we are trying to slow down the progression of cognitive decline or even prevent the progression into dementia. We are a 20-person team sitting out in Copenhagen. Our management team consists of myself. I have a background from the Boston Consulting Group, also a former vice president of marketing and strategy at Vestas, the world's largest wind energy company. Our chief, financial, uh, chief commercial officer, Beth Wolf, has 20 years of pharma experience from Novo Nordisk, Leo Pharma, and Sandoz, one of the first US companies, pharma companies, to make a big deal with the US digital therapeutic called Pair Therapeutics. Our chief science innovation officer, Simon Nilsson, led an innovation team of scientists at Coloplast, one of the largest Danish medtech companies. He also has a PhD in cognitive neuroscience. Bertil Stingard, our CFO, comes from a background from JP Morgan, Maersk, and recently GN, one of the largest Danish medtech companies as well, within hearing aids. Paula Petsu, our chief technology officer, single-handedly built up the digital health uh, organization within Lundbeck Pharma in Denmark before joining Brain Plus. And finally, our business development manager, um, Brian Istergaard, himself a former entrepreneur, building one of the leading software solutions for autism care in Denmark and exiting that to another company. Our board also has a strong, strong lineup. Lars Ternai, the senior partner from the private equity company Nordic Capital, is our, is our chairman. The very successful Danish health tech entrepreneur Jonas Nilsson, also a medical doctor, and Hannah Leth Hillman, CFO of the public biotech company Nanovi, former Neurosearch and uh, Seal and Pharma. So a strong team to bring this into fruition. But look, let's look again at the economics of being a digital therapeutics company. Digital therapeutics, they will be prescribed and reimbursed like pharmaceutical drugs are being today. And we're seeing this happening already in Europe and US that are leading the way. Looking as an example of Germany, as our tar which is a main target market for Brain Plus here in Europe, there are already two digital therapeutic reimbursement pathways, the DIGA and the DIPA, covering 30, uh, 73 million German lives. And we have already seen 31 software applications being approved through these reimbursement channels. France is following suit, and the US has already, in the, F the FDA has already uh, approved a number of what they call prescription digital therapeutics. When we look at the prices being, the reimbursement levels here and the prices, the average treatment in the US is being reimbursed at a level of 
1,000 US dollars per treatment. In Germany, we're looking at 400 euros per quarter, per three months. And of course, you can have several of these treatments during a year. When we add this up, we're looking at a market for uh, digital therapeutics for dementia of an addressable market of 5 billion US dollars. And with the disease population growing, we're expecting that to triple to around 15 billion US dollars. This is comparable to the today most mature digital health market, which is digital diabetes care. Today, the actual market side of digital diabetes care is already at 6 billion US dollars. And within four years, that is forecasted to grow to 17 billion US dollars. And when you look at the total cost of diabetes on a global scale, today that's 800 billion US dollars. And the global cost of dementia today is already 1,000 billion US dollars, so already larger than diabetes care. So we think. And we, we, our estimates would say that we are looking into a very attractive addressable market for digital therapeutics for dementia care. The first product we're going to put on the market is based on a therapeutic method called cognitive stimulation therapy. It is a form of talk therapy where a person with dementia is engaged in a conversation that requires them to do deep thinking and to engage socially. This is normally delivered in a group setting in a clinic, but what we have done is we have worked with uh, clinicians and key opinion leaders to make this digital, both to support people in the clinic and also to extend that into the home. The first product we will put on the market is called Therapist Companion, and it will support therapists already delivering conscious stimulation therapy. And this is a therapy that is set to become the, the global standard of care for non-pharmacological dementia treatments. It's already being adopted in 25 countries. It is a recommended standard of care in the UK, recommended by NICE, uh, which is also the country where this therapy originated from. And it is also the recommended standard of care in Germany, which is the target market that we will first launch this into. So this product will launch into Denmark and Germany in 2023, so next year. And there are 1.5 million people with dementia in, uh, in Germany. The economic case for this is a huge number of hours saved for the, the therapist working with this. But also in terms of the cognitive improvements, we are seeing point improvements that basically lift people two points on a recognized dementia cognition scale called the mini mental state examination, which is significant because one, if you look at something called mild dementia, that covers four points on the scale, and this will move you two points on that scale. So this is why NICE is recommending this, this type of therapy for dementia care. In Brain Plus, we have three core technologies, and the cognitive stimulation therapy is the first of them. We have two therapeutic methods. You can think of those like molecules, and we have one cognitive test. The other molecule, the therapeutic method, is called computerized cognitive training. And this is more like a fitness center for the brain. And it's more targeting, initially, the, the pre-stages to dementia. So I'll get back to that. The third technology is a memory test called Starry Night, originally developed by Oxford University. This can pick up the very early cognitive symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, which means that it is relevant for early detection of Alzheimer's disease many years before current tests are picking that up. We have worked with Oxford to make that test scalable, to gamify it so it can be used easily and, and remotely. So if we're looking at where our technologies are covering in terms of the disease progression of dementia, the first, uh, the first products, cognitive stimulation therapy, cover the mild to moderate stages of dementia and will be extended later on into mild cognitive impairment. Our, our uh, computerized cognitive training is targeting initially mild cognitive impairment, but can be extended in potentially into the mild dementia phases. And our starry night test is initially intended for monitoring uh, of progression of disease and can later on, as more data is, is uh, gathered, potentially be used for early detection and screening. So we have a pipeline of technologies and products. The first product we've talked about, the second product that will come out is to bring this cognitive stimulation therapy uh, from the clinic into the home. So this is the product is called the home extension. And then the other technologies are being matured through a number of clinical trials. And we have a product that is already, is a companion product to our therapeutics, which is an analytics interface for therapists. And this is already live to be able to support these type of uh, products. We have a clinical development program with six ongoing clinical trials across our three core technologies in different stages of dementia, including the at-risk stages like mild cognitive impairment with lead 
uh, with uh, leading academic organizations and patient organizations. And uh, these are in the pilot and proof of concept stages. We have already had four successful, successfully completed clinical trials with positive results in pilot and proof of concept stages across all three technologies. And two peer reviewed publications have come out this year. Our general approach, both in terms of the early innovation stages and all the way through to commercialization, is to partner. And one of the notable partnerships that we've done last year was with Rox Health, uh, is uh, the subsidiary of Roche Pharma, one of the leading healthcare players in, in the world, to bring our first product that I described onto the German market. And we're seeing a, large, a lot of activity in terms of strategic partnerships. We intend to scale with strategic partnerships, with licensing deals with pharma uh, as, one of the, uh, as one of the scaling ways. And we've seen a number of major deals happening in the, in the recent years. We've seen uh, notably is the 500 million US dollar deal between Boringer Ingelheim and Click Therapeutics for a digital therapeutic treatment of schizophrenia. We've also seen in the last few years a couple of 1 billion US dollar SPAC mergers. This was Achille Therapeutics and Pair Therapeutics, their way of going public. And, and these, these uh, sizes show some of the intrinsic value that investors are seeing in digital therapeutics. What are some of the next steps for Brain Plus? We will get readouts from five of the clinical trials I was showing you before this year. We are implementing uh, EQMS, so quality management system, to be able to live up to all the safety and privacy regulations, regulatory requirements of all the European countries. We are in the process of doing IP activities, including patents for our technologies. And some of the next stages for is to put our first product on the market in Germany and Denmark and to begin scaling that. In terms of development, it will be to do in-house clinical trials phase two and pivotal trials with the aim of getting some of the next products in our pipeline, the regulatory approvals. A quick mention finally on data, because besides solving the unmet clinical need of dementia, we will be amassing a lot of data which can both be used to improve the products, but which is also very interesting to partners. And one of the big opportunities that is strategic partnerships with pharma is to combine the digital therapeutics with pharmaceutical intervention as what is called a companion uh, treatment or an adjunct therapeutic. This is both because the pharmaceutical companies are interested in the data, but there are also the possibilities to improve compliance and to improve efficacy of such treatments. And so what are investors investing in here? To date, we have, had, we have built this technology base and our progress based on 70 million Danish kronos worth of innovation grants and equity investments. And another, on top of that, another 25 million that we took in during our IPO last year. So in summary, we're looking into a market with very strong fundamentals for digital therapeutics, becoming an intrinsical part of the way we deliver healthcare in the future. We're looking at a differentiated uh, pipeline or portfolio of, of therapeutics for dementia and some of the earlier stages like mild cognitive impairment. We have a strong execution track record. Our previous product generations have had more than 1 million downloads, for example, in the App Store being best new app in 150 countries. This was a non-medical product. And we have a solid balance sheet after our IPO. And finally, we have a strong team to execute. And so what we need going forward is the fuel to execute. So thank you very much for listening. And we're ready to take a few questions. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Um, first of all, how do you view the future for digital therapeutics? There's no doubt that within especially areas like uh, the central nervous system and brain disorders like dementia, digital therapeutics will play a key part and a key role more and more, especially because they offer, they offer alternatives. So I think we will see a mix in the future within the next coming decades where digital therapeutics will play an increasingly important part and share of delivering treatments. That doesn't, that will not replace the traditional treatments like drugs. In fact, like I said, they can be combined and there's a, there's a lot of, uh, of interesting opportunities in combining the two different uh, technologies, you can say. Interesting. And you have a partnership agreement with Rox Health in Germany. How will you utilize this partnership when launching on the German market? Yeah, so uh, we've, we've had a long-standing uh, uh, relationship with uh, Rox Health and increasingly with the Roche organization uh, in, 
in, in various countries, including the, the Global Roche Organization. So what, what they're helping us with is with the expertise to get onto the German market. How do we, how do we get through the right, all the right regulatory requirements, the data privacy requirements? Uh, how do we, what is the right business model? What are the right customer targets, et cetera? So making sure that we find all of that because one thing is reimbursement and the other thing is how do you then get the clinicians to adopt a product like that? And then they are also contributing uh, economically at this point, and they will what they will get in return is revenue share on on sales in the future of of some of our first products. And Brain Plus went it, public on First North Denmark last year. How has this affected interest and awareness of Brain Plus? Well, we can see that we are much more known as a company nowadays, which is of course one of the one of the benefits of going public, getting more media attention and, and such, particularly in Denmark. And now, of course, the reason we're here is because we want to get more known in, in Sweden. So it has benefited us a lot also in terms of, of uh, you can say, the, the quality stamp of approval that it is to be a public company, that this is helping us with partners. It's helping us to, to uh, recruit talent like uh, our CFO and our CTO, uh, I think, was partially helped by the fact that we were a public company. So I think it has greatly benefited us in, in that sense, although we all know that, it's, that the overall general uh, public markets are, are a little bit depressed due to the, what's happening in the world right now. Yeah, and um, thank you for joining us today in the studio, Kim. Thank you very much.